Hi, welcome to this week's episode of The Angel Room. Today's topic is 10 things that lower your frequency. First, I want to say hello to my listeners in Newport, Belgium. I'm just delighted to see the audience growing there and thank you for telling other people about it. It's it's just lovely to know that you're listening and I have your support. So thanks for joining in. So let's jump into this. Everything in the universe is made of energy. So the reason I'm explaining this is a lot of people say, what do you mean by frequency? What do you mean by my frequency, my vibration? They they don't understand that. And that's okay, because till somebody explains it, we don't understand any of these words or topics that are talked about. So everything in the world is vibrating at different frequencies, and that cl- includes us human beings. We have a frequency. And every day, we're either raising or lowering our vibration, depending on our mood, thoughts, and actions. So why is having high frequency important? If you are working to develop your spiritual gifts, such as intuition, mediumship, angel communications, empath ability, this requires a higher frequency. Raising your personal vibration is the core of being able to feel, see, and hear your angels. And it's not possible with a low frequency. And I'm going to explain that to you right now. I'm going to demonstrate it. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, it'll be easy. Those of you listening, I'll just have to try to verbally explain. Humans vibrate at this level down here. And then spirits are vibrating higher about here. Now, angels are vibrating higher even, and archangels are vibrating higher than that. We have to raise our vibration, our frequency as high as we can to match theirs if we want to receive contact with them, messages and signs from them. It just bridging the gap between us and them and giving yourself a much better chance of experiencing these beautiful celestial supernatural experiences that I know a lot of you want or want more of. Also, to ascend spiritually, you must have a very high frequency. I consider it so important that it's worth constant vigilance of yourself. That's what it takes. And that's how you quickly notice that something is lowering your frequency or raising it. Of course, when you notice that, then you need to make changes in what you're doing or your life to eliminate those things that are holding you back and encourage the things that are assisting you in rising up higher. So let's talk about some toxic habits that lower frequency. While many habits will help you raise your vibration, a lot of toxic ones will conversely lower it. That's why it's so important to be mindful of your daily pattern, because you are probably not even aware that those unhealthy habits are continuing to lower your vibration day after day. In this episode, I will cover the signs of a person having low vibration and 10 things that are so toxic they lower your frequency. I've covered high to raise how to raise your frequency in previous episodes, but it's important that you're aware of things that will lower it as well. So here are the signs that a person has low vibration. And this means they're in a negative headspace. So those signs would include being moody, including feeling depressed and anxious, feeling insecure and fearful, quick to respond with anger, ungrounded, complaining a lot, feeling fatigued with little energy, being ungrateful, unhealthy with little self-care, feeling stuck in life, making a lot of poor choices, frequent feelings of being the victim. So again, it's not just one or two, it's several of these symptoms, just like anything else. I mean, if we just picked one, feeling insecure and fearful, there's billions of people right now feeling that. But if you have several of these other symptoms as well, if you or someone you know is exhibiting a number of these symptoms, their frequency needs to be raised. You have no control over another person's frequency, but needs to be your project. So as I mentioned, I did go over how to raise your frequency in an earlier episode, and you can find that and learn how to get your vibration moving upward. 
I also talk about that on my website. I've written a couple blog posts and that is ivoryangelic.com. I recently changed the URL. So ivoryangelic.com. This is a sign that a person's frequency is high. They feel positive. They have a lot of happiness. They have inner peace, good energy, and they're physically healthy. Doesn't mean they're in perfect health, but overall they're feeling some energy, some vitality. Perhaps you can feel that happening when it when it happens to you, and it could be your frequency can be lowering without you even knowing it. Here are the toxic things you should avoid if you want to raise your frequency. The first one is specific environments. Your surroundings can either raise or lower your vibration. It could be specific to places, particular people, or your surroundings that continue to lower your frequency. And one thing I really need to interject here is that living in a place like the the city, the state, an area that is not conducive, does not match your frequency, will lower your frequency. So if you always go to a place and feel so happy and free there, it's good for your frequency, good for your vibration. And if living in a place or vacationing in a place drags you down, it's lowering your frequency. I I like to put that out there because before you buy a home, rent a home, just make a move. It's important to go and feel how it feels to you. Really take a little bit of time to tune into it quietly and see that's effect on your frequency. I did that for this current house and it's paid off so well. This is such great, calm, neutral land to live on. And I haven't always had that. So it's been wonderful. So pay attention to how you feel when you're in different places around different people And strive to avoid the people and environments that drain your energy and lower your vibration. The next one, watching the news and violent TV. What you watch on TV, at the movie theater, on your computer, on your phone has a huge impact on your vibrational level. That includes social media. So if you're watching, hate to say it, but conspiracy theories, and you're watching a lot of violent content or angry content, same thing, or fearful content. All of those are low frequency. And so it's particularly true when watching the news and violent TV shows or movies. And that's because the news focuses primarily on negative events. They like to get people all riled up. That's how they get ratings. And by consuming all that negativity, your vibration will drop. So if you're watching something and you feel uncomfortable, you get really tired, you feel an ache in your upper stomach, that solar plexus, the great receptor of energy in our bodies, your energy field is being damaged. And it's like someone's taking an ice pick and sticking holes in it and you start leaking energy out. That's that's a good visual to have for it because that's the effect it has on you. So stop watching. (laughs) I always tell people when it comes to the news, a good rule of thumb is to give yourself no more than 10 minutes a day. I would look at it, like read it if you can, rather than watching videos, watching it live, because that's more harmful to your frequency. Skim the highlights, find out what's going on in the world. You could just do it a few times a week. Things don't change that fast. So a few times a week, 10 minutes, and then put it away. If you wallow in the news, your frequency is going to go down. No matter what your stance is, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just the nature of news. So the next one is stress. And this is a tough one. When you feel stressed or anxious, you are vibrating at a lower frequency just by nature of being in those feelings. You're not living in the present and you're ungrounded. So you're either worrying about something you did in the past, can't change that, or something that might happen in the future. And I emphasize might because the truth is most of the things we worry about will never happen. We're just wasting our time and energy. Life is going to unfold in the way it is meant to, whether you worry or not. You're not some talisman. You're not a good luck charm. You're not going to prevent unsettling things from occurring just by worrying they might happen. All you're doing is upsetting yourself for no reason and lowering your frequency. So when you're in those situations, it's important to ground yourself. Here's some techniques you can use to do that. Put your bare feet on real grass or soil for 30 minutes. That's called earthing. 
and it just kind of evens out your frequency with Earth's frequency. It's very calming. You can read a book or talk to people, be on the phone while you're doing it. Just don't be angry when you're on the phone. But you can just sit and relax and do that, and it'll take care of it. Um, something I've talked about doing here in the Sedona area, my friend and I will go to a special place, a certain place on Oak Creek, and it's a, it's a large creek, and we will sit on this rock where we can dangle our feet in the running water, and that has the same effect it for us. We just There's not much soil in this area. It's a lot of gravel yards and stickers everywhere, but you can dangle your feet in running water and get that same effect. So you can put your bare feet on a grounding mat until you feel better. You can also sleep on one if you need extra grounding. Um, I will put a link to a site that sells some good ones. I, I, I have one from them because a friend told me about it. I have the kind you put on the floor. And sometimes when it's not too cold, I'll take my shoes off and I have my feet on it as I'm doing my virtual sessions because it keeps me very grounded. Um, talking to a lot of people who are emotionally upset. Um, they have a lot of, of trauma going on in their life. And so I don't want to absorb it. I want it to just pass right through me. And it just works really well to calm me down. Now, I can't sleep on those things because I feel the frequency and the, the vibration of it. I'm very sensitive to that. It kept me awake all night. But I have friends who swear by sleeping on them every night, all night. So you can experiment with that. It just sends a slight electrical current, which is the same current as the earth. So it's like it's like earthing. But you can do it in the house year round. You can do it, like I said, put your feet on it or sleep on it. And you can also take a bath in a cup of Epsom salts with a few drops of lavender essential oil and soak in the tub as long as you want to. Uh, that's also very grounding. If you don't have a tub, um, I'm very tall. I'm like an Amazon woman. I know you can't tell in, a, in this screen, but I'm too tall to do that in a tub. So I have a large basin and I put the Epsom salts and lavender oil in this basin and I'll put my feet in it. And it's almost as good as your full body being in the bath. So another thing that can lower your frequency is not getting enough sleep. We all know how important our sleep is. Just think about the last time you didn't get too much sleep. For me, that was two nights ago <laughs> when I had barely any sleep at all. So nights like that will make you appreciate a good night's sleep. Unfortunately, it happens for me a lot. Insomnia runs in my family for the women. Uh, if the same is true for you, it's important to establish a nighttime routine that you do every night prior to your sleep. Go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time. It can be things like, here's, here's what I do. I like to have a cup of hot chocolate. Even in the summer, sometimes I do this and I don't keep my house super cold, but I'll have a cup of hot chocolate and then I get ready for bed. And then I read something very calming. There's a variety of different authors I like for that. Something very calm and then I turn off the light and I say my prayers, my protection, and I do healing on people and I go to sleep. So that's what I do every night. And you come up with your own routine, but that's just an example of what I do to tell my brain, okay, sleep time's coming up. No more TV, no more phone, no nothing that has blue light, nothing that's too stimulating. So you're not watching videos, you're not doing anything like that on your phone, you are just putting that aside and going with an actual book, not a Kindle, because the Kindle will have the same effect as being on your phone. You need to read a book. Glory be, I know. Imagine, if you will, real books made of paper and everything. That's what libraries are for. So you can do something like that. Come up with your own routine that works for you. Because when you don't get enough sleep, you don't have much energy. And all you want to do is lay down and get that much needed sleep, right? Not to mention sleep deprivation affects your thinking and your motor skills. All in all, not getting enough sleep will lower your vibration. And this one is easy to notice as, a, as it will affect you so strongly. For me, it's so powerful that if I have a terrible night's sleep like two nights ago, I can't work the next day. I can't do spiritual work. I can't help people with profound issues in their life and businesses who are doing multi-million dollar mergers and acquisitions. I, I cannot do any kind of reliable work 
when I haven't had enough sleep. So just know it's because it's lowering your frequency, sapping your energy. The next one is alcohol. While alcohol might temporarily make you feel good, it is a depressant. That's widely known. So it lowers your vibration. It's an escape from reality that gives you a false sense of happiness, but it leaves you low on energy, unmotivated, and irritable when that alcohol wears off. So try to avoid alcohol and instead adopt a new healthy outlook on life. You'll discover that you can find happiness from within yourself. You can find healthier ways to distract yourself when you need to. Negative people and thinking. Oh, this is a big one. Negativity is a major low vibration level. That includes both having a negative mindset and spending time with negative people. Both will drain your energy and leave you feeling low and unmotivated. Become mindful of your thoughts. Do you usually complain a lot and generally have a negative outlook on life? And what about the people you spend time with? How do they make you feel? If you leave a conversation or event feeling drained and exhausted, your frequency has been lowered. Sometimes you must avoid certain people, groups, events, and places if they regularly have a draining effect on you. And if they're people very close to you, like a lot of people tell me like it's family members, then you limit your time being cognizant of it. You're, you're really paying attention to how you feel. And as soon as you start feeling those effects of your lowering frequency, you say goodbyes. It's okay. It's not anything bad. No one's bad. No one's good. You're just protecting your energy. The next one is overthinking. Ugh. Every time I read that word, I want to go, uh, yeah, I have that problem. When we overthink, we get trapped in our thoughts and we can start to jump to the worst conclusions. And this can leave you feeling stressed, ungrounded, anxious, and even paranoid. These are all low vibration emotions you want to avoid. Learn to let go of the past. Do some forgiveness work. That's also on my website under resources. Please use it. It's why it's there. Trust that everything is working out exactly how it's supposed to. Here's something I like to say out loud whenever I start to overthink and like um, worrying, that kind of thing. I say, everything is working out for my best and highest good. And sometimes I like to say it as a mantra if I feel myself trapped in a thought I don't want or worrying about something, I'll just start saying that over and over out loud or in my head if I'm not in a place I can say it out loud. Another way to look at overthinking is that it actually is creating drama. So if I find myself doing that, I'll, I'll say out loud, stop creating drama. And it makes me laugh, but it stops the thought process. You might be going over potential situations in your mind, thinking of different ways a person might react. Understand that that's make-believe. It's all in your mind. There's no reality to any of that. So you're just upsetting yourself and damaging your frequency for nothing. I'm listening as I'm saying it to you. Trust me. <laughs> Another one is processed foods. Oh boy. First, I tell you alcohol lowers your frequency and now it's processed foods. Sad, but true. The energy you consume from food has an enormous impact on your vibrational level. Foods that lower your frequency include, this is not a full list by any means. I did do an uh, episode about this. You can look for it. Meat and animal products, processed and fried food. I'll tell you right now, sugar, too much salt. Basically anything that doesn't come from plants. It's important to eat food that makes you feel good and raises your vibration. Think of food as your fuel by choosing nutritious, rich, whole plant-based food. If raising your frequency is important to you, then watching what you eat is going to be high on your priority list. So maybe you're, you know, I'm primarily a vegetarian, not, I do eat meat, some meat now and then, but I'm primarily vegetarian. Just introduce more vegetables into your diet. Do your, just do your best, you know, make slow changes. Your body, your mind, your higher self will push you, direct you, and, and your angels will jump in there too to take the next step if and when it comes to that. A great tip is to become mindful of your eating habits and how the food makes you feel. 
Start with paying attention to how you feel after a meal. The food you eat should give you energy and make you feel good. If you are lethargic, too tired to think, falling asleep, something in that meal is pulling your frequency down. The next one, social media. Big surprise there, right? Too much time spent on social media can negatively affect your frequency. However, it also depends on the content you tend to check out. I follow other spiritual people. I follow some other angel communicators. I follow positivity people. I follow people who are posting interesting, thought-provoking quotes. Be mindful of what you look at on social media and how it makes you feel. Much of what you see online is a false reality resulting in envy, jealousy, fear, sadness. So if any social media content leaves you feeling bad, avoid it. It's not good for you or your frequency. And this is a good reminder. If you, like me, do social media, I have social media accounts. I'm very active on Instagram, active on Facebook, active on YouTube. Watch what you post on social media. Let's not add to the problem by causing lowering vibrations for others. You know, just keep in mind that what you post has an effect on people when they read it. The next is judging and criticizing. That's a pet peeve of mine. These are forms of physical projection. If your ego, it's your, it's your ego trying to make yourself feel better about an unwanted trait or feeling that you yourself have. Every time you judge or criticize someone, you lower your own vibration since it comes from a very negative space. To overcome this, you need to work on building your self-confidence and loving yourself. Because when you are confident, you'll have no need to project your insecurities onto others. We are not in competition with one another. We're only in competition with ourselves. Now I'm gonna tell you about a supervisor I had when I started my last position in mental health, I actually started as assisting her. She was the director of mental health and she was so good. She would very nicely point out when people were being judgmental. For instance, I always worked with low income and homeless people. And so this health facility that I was, my office was at was for people who were low income and some of them were homeless. And occasionally staff would get in an uproar because somebody would pull into the parking lot in a Cadillac or some nice car. And, and she was the one who would say, you're judging, you're judging. You don't, you don't know anything about that person. And later when she was gone and I took over her role as director, I was the one who did that because I would say, we don't know if that car isn't the only thing they have. Maybe they live in it. Maybe it's the only possession they have. Maybe it's all they have left. Maybe their life took a severe turn downward. We need to think about these things instead of judging and criticizing. So in conclusion, I encourage you to work towards removing the toxic things from your life that don't make you feel good. And you're guaranteed to raise your vibration while feeling your absolute best. Please tune in next Sunday. The topic is going to be very interesting. Uh, I have a guest. His name is Joe Singleton. He's an author. And we're talking about the karmic wheel of life. It's really interesting. It's already been recorded. So I know how that interview went. And I look forward to you enjoying it next week. And in the meantime, may your angels surround you. May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. I'll see you next week.